Hello everyone, and um, I, um, I thank the organizers for inviting me for the wonderful uh, conference. Uh, they've organized the beautiful events, the wonderful program. Uh, great job. Um, sorry, we're right into the uh, one hour postprandial state, I think, so if, <laughs> if you do fall asleep, I can understand. Um, we, uh, I will briefly talk about the uh, ICQC, um, which is the International Carbohydrate Quality Consortium, and what we've done uh, so far. Uh, I, I wrote a few slides, um, I prepared a few slides last night, and uh, it was during a hypotension uh, event <laughs> or evening and uh, of 88 over 52 millimeter mercury. So I was uh, trying to put this together. So if I'm missing something, I'll blame it on the hypotension while my colleague was suggesting me to drink a lot of water and uh, keep, my, keep my feet up and lay down. And by doing all that and uh, finishing the presentation was a bit tough. Um, so is there any particular diet for hypotension and trying to gain weight? I'd like to know that later. Um, okay, so uh, I will, uh, just my disclosures, I don't really have any uh, myself. Uh, the ICQC meeting uh, we had, um, we had uh, this Tuesday, um, it was supported by industry. And um, I am a member of the ICQC group. The um, uh, sub, uh, support of the industry who supported us uh, for the meeting uh, last Tuesday, you can see here, and also the um, research group, the Toronto 3D, who organized this conference. So this is a nice picture, I hope you think. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, um, a bunch of researchers around the world decided to get together in Stresa on Lake Maggiore in Italy, just uh, below the Alps uh, on the other side. Uh, you can go and visit Switzerland. And this is about maybe 80 kilometers from north of Milan. But we didn't go there for a holiday. We went there uh, to uh, talk about um, carbohydrates and to talk about science, particularly around carbohydrates. Um, so this is what we organized two years ago. That was June 6th and 7, 2013. This meeting was co-organized by the Nutrition Foundation of Italy and Old Ways USA. And uh, with the in intent of uh, writing the, um, an international scientific consensus um, summit, basically. We, we organized the summit to write the uh, consensus. So we wanted to uh, go through the, um, the science behind it and see what um, we could agree on and what we didn't agree on, where the gaps were, and discuss and try to uh, move the uh, science, uh, the carbohydrate science forward, hopefully. So that's, uh, that's what happened um, in uh, June, June 6th and 7th, 2013. So we, um, we had this summit on the uh, glycemic index, glycemic load, and glycemic response in Stresa. Um, and um, we uh, wrote the consensus statement um, because we thought that um, um, it was important for, for scientists also to uh, clarify, to know what was... Uh, uh, thought by the experts in uh, this area of glycemic index, glycemic load, and uh, glycemic response. The ICQC is a non-profit uh, organization, and uh, it is international. Um, it was created in response to scientific, governmental, uh, public needs to have more clarity on the science around dietary carbohydrates, quality, and uh, health. And these are the founders, or well, most of them, Maybe there were a couple missing. In fact, um, we are 21 members from 11 countries over three continents. And uh, all the members and chairs are academic scientists and or from nonprofit organizations. Um, the chairs are David Jenkins and Walter Willett. And the members are listed here in alphabetical order. The um, ICQC mission um, is to support, summarize, and disseminate the science around dietary carbohydrate quality and health. 
and we hope to find um, solutions or identify the gaps and find possible solutions, creating new collaborations, encouraging <laughs> scientific dialogue and harmonizing the carbohydrate discussion within and between academia, industry and governmental uh, bodies. We plan to meet every, at least every two years and last, um, the last meeting we had was last Tuesday, June 9th. So what we did uh, so far since um, June 2013, since we, we formed, um, we wrote a position letter on the GI labeling, which is published in the British Journal of Nutrition. We also responded to several calls, uh, the Health Canada uh, call on postprandial glycemia, the UK Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition, um, and Diabetes UK. We <coughs> also wrote the consensus statement on glycemic index, glycemic load, and glycemic response, which is impressed in the Nutrition, Metabolism, and Cardiovascular Disease uh, Journal. And that, that is it. Um, I'm not lying. It is coming up. <laughs> so that's the one. Um, and I got permission to show this from the journal. The uh, consensus statement that is um, about to be published um, includes 20 points, but I'm just going to summarize it briefly here. Um, the consensus was that low GI and low GL diets were relevant to the prevention and treatment of diabetes and coronary heart disease and possibly <clears throat> obesity. The group affirmed also that low GI and GL diets should always be considered in the context of a healthy diet. And I think we've heard that um, uh, quite a bit also during this conference complementing other ways of characterizing carbohydrate foods, such as fiber, whole grain content, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, another important point was that low glycemic index and uh, low glycemic load diets are particularly important in individuals with insulin resistance. And given the high prevalence of diabetes and prediabetes worldwide, and the consistency of the scientific evidence uh, that we reviewed, uh, uh, at the time, but it seems to be still fairly consistent. The expert panel confirmed the urgent need to communicate information on the glycemic index, glycemic load uh, to the general public and health professionals through channels such as the National Dietary Guidelines, food composition labels and food, lab and, um, and food labels. Sorry, that was food composition tables <laughs> and food labels. And, oh, uh, this is probably the hypotension effect, sorry. Uh, so that is the meeting. That's what we, we, we had uh, I talked about last uh, Tuesday. So we discussed uh, uh, the progress on glycemic index, glycemic um, labeling and guidelines, um, the latest research and future direction on GI and GL. And uh, also we wanted to know more about uh, other, other healthy carbohydrates. Um, there were discussions about that. Um, there was a discussion uh, from the industry. And also we discussed our future, the future of the ICQC. Um, regarding the first point, uh, the progress on glycemic index labeling guidelines, uh, there were methodological discussions. Um, it was presented also uh, this new program from Australia, the, um, lab the GI lab accreditation program. And we discussed opportunities and barriers of GI labeling from the Canadian and European perspectives. Um, regarding the latest research and future direction on GI and, and GL, uh, we uh, heard um, Frank Sachs talking about the Omnicarb study and its interpretations. Uh, we heard uh, Jenny Bremmiller talking about the previous study, and um, we discussed the uh, latest findings from the low GI studies in Toronto by David Jenkins, uh, new GI measurements, and in vitro pasta studies um, um, results. Uh, another point uh, we, um, that we discussed was um, the uh, other healthy carbohydrate diets. For example, there were a lot of discussions on uh, whole grains and uh, lentils, fructose, and viscous fibers. The industry perspective um, included uh, discussion and talks of, of uh, low glycemic index snacks, snack bars, uh, novel slowly digestible carbohydrates, uh, starch digestibility and glycemic responses, lowering glycemia with novel carbohydrate ingredients and supporting the GI message uh, in uh, general. Um, we planned uh, also some future activities. Um, these are just some of them. Of course, we will uh, continuously promote the good quality carbohydrates and research uh, on carbohydrate and health. 
um, will promote the GI accreditation programs, which aims at standardizing the GI methodology in GI labs globally, and, and, and hence it will help to improve reliability and reproducibility of GI values, and particularly to develop country-specific GI databases. And uh, we will um, also um, work on the uh, ICQC reporting guidelines for a glycemic index, glycemic load uh, in dietary assessments in epidemiological studies. This is to improve the reproducibility and comparability of GIGL studies. And I, and I think that the GI accreditation program will help in this direction very much. Um, also, there is, of course, a lot of focus um, uh, around carbohydrate in terms of um, uh, disease risk reduction, in terms of uh, diabetes and coronary heart disease, but uh, I think we need to also look um, also into cancer, particularly secondary prevention. And uh, we discussed um, funding, of course, uh, and that is the, the, the usual issue that we, we all have. And hopefully, we, if some of you that supported us um, like our work and um, continue to, would like to continuously support us, that would, um, that would be excellent. We can discuss that uh, afterwards. And uh, I, would like to, um, I would like to thank you all for your attention. And, uh, and thank everyone um, that uh, made this possible. Thank you. <laughs>